This video shows early results on the simulation of community energy storage, a research effort sponsored by Pecan Street, leaders in smart grid research in Austin, Texas. The residential data for this analysis was provided by Pecan Street and is used to simulate actual solar generation and residential consumption at the site of where the community storage unit is being considered for deployment. My name is Fabian Uriarte from the University of Texas at Austin and I will guide you through the rest of this presentation. The objective of this presentation is to test a simple control strategy on a community energy storage unit model. Here's the outline for this presentation. First, we show the electrical distribution system for the residential community. Then, we show a diagram of the community energy storage unit. Then, we present the control strategy used for this unit. Then, we show the simulation model results, and finally make some concluding statements. So let's take a look at the electrical distribution. This is the electrical distribution system for a residential community in Austin, Texas. The entire community is fed radially from one lateral, where each phase serves 20 to 40 transformers. The storage unit will be installed alongside one of the 94 transformers. This shows that the impact of the storage unit will be small as seen from the substation. However, there may be advantages for the homes downstream of this particular transformer. Let's take a look at what the storage unit will look like. The schematic of the storage unit is shown here. From the top, we show the distribution transformer stepping down the utility voltage. The transformer is connected on its secondary side to the energy storage unit, shown inside the orange box. Inside the storage unit, there's a disconnect switch that permits entering island mode if needed. Also, inside the storage unit, there is an AC bus that interconnects a 25 kilowatt PV to a 25 kilowatt hour battery. The output of the storage unit feeds the eight homes shown at the bottom. Let's take a look at what the control strategy used for the storage unit will be. The unit charges when the transformer load is low or when the sun is out. In either case, the state of charge must have reached 10%. The unit discharges when the PV output fluctuates or when the transformer load is high, which in this case is considered to be above 30 kilowatts. Also, in either case, the state of charge must be at least 90%. Although these strategies are preliminary, they help to quickly size the storage unit and give a first look at what the demand will be. Let's take a look at what the simulation model looks like. But first, we clarify the simulation type that is used. Before showing the simulation results, a note on the simulation type is very important. The simulation presented next is a phaser type simulation, not a transient one. The simulation results are therefore returned as voltage and current phasers instead of instantaneous quantities. The advantages of the simulation type are the ability to simulate a seven day time span in a matter of seconds, and the compatibility with field recorded data, which is in one minute intervals. The disadvantages of the simulation are that the dynamics are not captured and that we cannot model switching converters. In power system simulation, it is common to start with a phaser simulation and progressively move towards a transient simulation as a dis additional detail is needed. The simulation model is shown here. We use MATLAB Simulink with SimPower systems to simulate the utility supply, transformer, and disconnect switch only. For the 25 kilowatt PV, we use power injection based on pre-recorded field data. For the storage unit, we use a controlled power injection that automatically decides whether to charge or discharge the battery, based on the control scheme. For the homes, just like the PV, we also use power injection based on pre-recorded field data. Let's look at what we mean by pre-recorded field data. The following data corresponds to a week in July of 2011. The top curve set shows the residential power and energy for eight homes over one week. The blue curve shows the real power consumption. 
the green curve shows a reactive power consumption, and the red curve plotted against the right side axis shows the total energy consumed by the eight homes in the course of the week. The bottom chart shows the power and energy generated by the 25 kilowatt PV over the course of the same week. Comparing the red curves on the top and bottom, it is noticed that the eight homes consumed more energy than what the PV produced. Let's take a look at what happens when we add community energy storage. Here are the simulation results for a 25 kilowatt hour battery. The blue and green curves show the residential real and reactive power consumption. The red curve shows the battery's discharge power profile as being positive and its charging profile as being negative. Referring to Sunday, the battery starts by charging at midnight. During the day, the battery supports the PV fluctuations and high transformer demand. Around 5 p.m., the battery has to recharge, which makes it unavailable for additional load support. This performance is strictly a function of the control strategy presented earlier and does not necessarily represent the one that will be used. Looking at the rest of the week, it is gathered that the battery discharges early in the afternoon and must recharge between 3 and 9 p.m. This makes the battery unavailable during most evenings, according to the control strategy used. What happens if we keep the same control strategy but increase the battery size to 100 kilowatt hours? While this may not be economically or physically viable, the results are still of interest to the manufacturers. Comparing the red curves, the larger battery is available in the evenings, while the smaller one is not. Also, the larger battery undergoes less charging cycles per week. At the same time, the charging power of the larger battery is significantly higher, which can increase the transformer demand. While this appears to be a good solution, it does not address the control strategy. In this type of small-scale storage, it is preferable to revisit the control strategy rather than to construct a larger battery. Finally, we present the conclusions of this study. The 50 kVA transformer sized properly for the eight homes shown in this study. This means that a storage unit is not needed for transformer load leveling at this particular community. The PV unit is an excellent source to charge the battery. However, the battery should not be used to support PV fluctuations for two reasons. First, such small PVs do not produce system instabilities when supported by the grid. And second, the battery would be discharged too early in the afternoon. On the battery size, the 25 kilowatt hour batteries appears to be small for the given load as it discharges quickly. However, this is a function of the control strategy which is being revisited. The large battery, on the other hand, is available most evenings but more analysis is needed to determine if the cost-benefit ratio is favorable. There are additional uses for the storage unit that still need to be addressed. This includes flicker mitigation, outage support, and cost savings to the residents. We hope you enjoyed this presentation as much as we did putting it together. If you have questions, please direct them to myself at the information shown above. Thank you very much.